I just want to show you some still shots which give you the extremes of what you can get with acrylic paints now. This is a heavy impasto and uh, you haven't previously been able to get this with the colour actually of the paint. You've had to put a modelling compound down first and then paint over it which isn't really very spontaneous is it? I think the main thing that people using acrylics will now enjoy and we're talking about A2 in this particular case is that the painterliness of it the ability to paint wet in wet with one colour dragging through another as you can see here um, is something which again becomes a new experience Here's another image showing the same thing. But I think you need to see this being uh, actually done in, uh, in uh, uh, full-time sequence. I'm going to actually do some live painting for you to show you the feel because it's really nice. I'd better explain what this surface is before we start painting, I think. And th this will be in a separate section about gessoing. And to my mind, it's very important to gesso your painting before you start because um, it makes a hell of a difference to the outcome and you end up using less paint. But this morning, I'm going to show you what happens when you're using the uh, Atelier A2 paints in a wet in wet session. And I'm using thick painting medium which is this one here and here is some white and some cerulean blue hue so I start mixing the colour on the palette as you can see it's nice and juicy but I want it to stay wet a bit longer I take about an equal amount of the thick painting medium and as you can see the viscosity is about the same as it was before I added the medium so it's a very juicy medium that gives me a very painterly effect and of course I can make it smooth if I want to be really smooth I can do that if I want to be sort of brushy I can do things like that and uh, that is very hard to do with wet paint over dry paint uh, it just doesn't look the same now I'm going to have to stop for a minute and recharge my palette because uh, I'm running out of paint and let's see what I can do wet in wet uh, I might do, to start with, just show you that it's not really, i like, put some Matisse out here so that you can see that uh, it is possible to use different brands and different qualities. So I can go swish swish through there. Now, when you're swishing a wet colour over another wet colour, you're painting wet in wet like that, it's a good idea to make sure that the wet colour, the one you're putting on top, is just a little bit softer than the colour underneath. Now, that'll usually happen anyway because the first layer of paint is still wet but it's absorbing into the background and it's evaporating into the air a little bit. So it's probably, uh, if there's a five, ten minutes delay, it's probably going to be a bit stickier and heavier than the next layer. So it'll work out okay. Now, we've, we've discovered that that's doable. Nothing exploded or anything. Let's try some interactive. 
which is going to give us a, uh, a different shade of, uh, of blue and a nice big wallop of medium. Now the nice thing about this thick medium, one of the many nice things is that it's thick enough to sit on the palette and it doesn't sort of run around and uh, have to be chased and you, you don't have to hold your palette uh, in a horizontal position. You can tilt it and the paint still stays there. So I think this is rather nice to be able to just luxuriate in what you're doing. I'm not trying to paint a masterpiece. I'm making excuses for myself, you might think, but I'm just trying to show you paint consistency that you can get with A2. Now that was A2 with a little dab of Zala uh, Turquoise Interactive. Let's go to A2 with uh, some cad yellow hue. So I'm going to mix that up again with some white. And a nice big dollop of medium. Because it's this thick painting medium that keeps your paint wet for wet in wet work and I've already discolored the yellow on, on the palette as you can see but do I have to do a hell of a lot more of this to convince you that you've got a kind of uh, a feel under the brush that you don't normally get with acrylics. They're usually pretty pretty neutral, I suppose you'd say. Uh, as I've said before, you don't have to do sort of paintly things all the time. You can do smooth things. You can add water and the paint breaks down nicely. It breaks down especially nicely on this translucent gesso, which will be talked about separately in the gesso section of the website. But that's pretty nice the way that goes down. <coughs> now, if you want to go to the real extremes of impasto, let's go to an impasto extreme um, with a big wallop of stylo blue and some heavy gel. Heavy gel satin is formulated so that it doesn't make the painting glossier where you've used it, it's balanced so that the gloss level is the same. Now, I'm using approximately the same amount of gel as uh, I'm using paint. And although the gel is whitish, it kind of just disappears into the paint. And you can see it doesn't take a lot of mixing to get it to go into a very impasto effect if you want to have an oil paintly sort of thing happening it's not very hard to do is it and that hasn't been possible before and you're doing it with this humble paint for students called A2 which has the benefit of being light fast and you can do scrape backs and 
I want to show you what happens when you use a little bit of moisture because this is the other thing I think you really need to get used to because uh, when you're painting with this paint and with this new medium which holds moisture you can spritz it with a good spritzing spray and you see how that's just sitting there now I'm going to hold this vertically because normally you would be painting on uh, an easel I suppose now mostly when you use a medium if you start to spritz the painting the medium starts to dissolve and the painting is likely to dribble down the can down the surface because it's nearly vertical but this is just holding it there so this medium is capable of uh, uh, grabbing the moisture that's being pumped into it and so this allows you to keep working wet in wet for much longer because um, acrylic paint has water as its mobility agent you might say as soon as the water evaporates a paint starts to get sticky and then it becomes unworkable and you can't really paint with it so if you've got a way of replacing the moisture that's being lost then uh, you can keep on painting wet in wet when you want to when you finish you just stop giving it water uh, take it out and put it in the sun to dry or you can force dry it with a hair dryer don't go too fiercely if your painting is thickly as that um, be a little bit kinder don't force dry it too fast uh, it, it's, it's, it's a different world from the world of acrylics that most people are living in where you've got something which uh, dries very quickly the other thing I'd like to point out here because I'm in Brisbane it's winter time in Australia and it's cold to me it's cold it's not really very cold at all but to a person living in Brisbane it feels cold so I've had the air conditioner on and I can feel the 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 air draft is making the paint dry faster so if you trying to give yourself a painting session where the paint remains wet for a good while um, the smart thing to do is to warm the room up first turn the air conditioner off so that there isn't an airflow which is evaporating the moisture out of your painting so I hope that's enough to convince you that you can do some pretty worthwhile paintings with A2 and you can mix it with uh, Atelier Interactive or Matisse or any sort of artist colouring series if you want to use odd different colours but this can become your mainstay if you are a serious student you need to be able to wax and paint around as I've just been doing don't be miserable don't be mean with yourself uh, you know give it a, a real uh, going over and get your finger in the paint get used to the way paint feels because it'll tell you a lot get used to the way a gessoed surface feels with a proper gesso because most Chinese canvases really just have white paint on them that's not really what you call a gesso and you get much nicer effects if you have uh, spend 10 minutes or so gessoing the, the, the canvas before you start painting as I have okay I think that's all I want to say I hope I've made a sale